other aspects of Mount Vernon is we interpret the landscape to 1799, the year George Washington died. Well, there's a lot of story to be told at Mount Vernon. There's the, the story of the native peoples that were here on the land before us. Uh, there's the evolution of the mansion, evolution of the landscape design. Um, there's the whole history of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association who purchased the property in 1858, uh, then went through the Civil War. Uh, so all those stories, they kind of get lost in time when I don't have a corresponding building or any type of environment to be able to tell those, those different stories. Uh, so what we really see um, augmented reality, virtual reality uh, doing is altering the, the ability to tell these other different stories, um, to take people into worlds uh, where it's not visible today. Um, so how many of you have experienced some type of AR or VR experience? Okay, we got a couple hands in the room, yep. Um, and how many know the difference between VR and AR? Okay, fewer hands. So virtual reality um, is probably the thing that you guys are most familiar with. This is where you put the goggles on and you're like encompassed in, in this environment and the, what gets displayed on, in those goggles becomes the environment around you. You're typically seated, hopefully, <laughs> um, but then you know, it, it, you're, you're basically interacting with what is in space. Now this is great. We have a very popular section of our website called the Virtual Tour, um, mountvern.org slash virtual tour. It's 50 points across the estate, all of our points of interest in that. It's typically the top 10 most accessed pages on the website, and it's used as a tool to be able to drive visitation. We actually know that you know, for every person that goes onto the virtual tour, it's worth two cents to me uh, in, in the way that our, we handle our analytics on the ticketing side. Um, and so this is a, it's a try before you buy type of uh, uh, visitation experience. That translates really well into VR. In classrooms, you know, we can have VR glasses that allow you to take you right to the Mount Vernon. You know, whether you're in Iowa, whether you're in California, places where you can't be. Um, and so it's a great teaching tool. But as far as on-site interpretation, not so great, right? So augmented reality, you are interpreting within the space. So I am projecting things within your visible landscape, but you can still see the world around you through the glasses. Um, so we've made kind of a, a promotional video that will show how we're using this at our site. All right. So what does this look like? So the guests, they wear these glasses that you are being passed around. Um, you know, they look like the Geordie LaForge at a Star Trek type of visor, you know. Um, it's connected to a, 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 a small PC. Um, and then they typically have some type of earbud headphones, which is not visible in this promotional photo, but uh, um, allows them to, to listen to content. Um, and it's, they walk around our historic area outside and we're able to augment different things. In, in the video you saw, um, we, we can overlay the landscape and put the Vaughn plan, which is the Samuel Vaughn plan that, uh, that Washington worked with to design the landscape of Mount Vernon. You know, that's not something that we have on a historic, in a, in a big old panel you know, in uh, obstructing our, our landscape. Um, it is only really available either through some type of visual aid on a tour or through a self-guided way. So it, a good way to think about this is it's like an audio tour, but with the ability to add visuals on top of it. Um, the other th capabilities are within this thing is we have the ability uh, to show you the phased evolution of Mount Vernon. That's probably the the, the best example of this uh, over time is you can see the small, uh, the, the small uh, four bedroom uh, original dwelling, then you can see the expansion, then you can see the house that you uh, have seen today. Um, we also have the ability to kind of recreate different buildings. So we have a, a house for, the house for families, which is a lost building, um, uh, but it's where a lot of the enslaved population uh, resided uh, that worked on mansion 
Mission House Farm. And that is, a, a, we have now the ability to, we know archaeology, through archaeology work, where that footprint of that building is and how tall it was and kind of where it was situated. Well, we can now recreate that building and we can physically put it back in the landscape without actually physically putting it in the landscape and disrupting things. So it's a really uh, fascinating technology um, and it's a great tool uh, for interpretation. The other advantage to this too is we have over 180 acres. We have a lot of different outbuildings. Um, you know, if you're going through our mansion, there is great interpretation. And in fact, we actually do not allow this in the mansion as part of the tour because we don't want to sacrifice that great uh, you know, human interpretation of Mount Vernon. But as you're exploring our landscapes, as you're exploring our gardens, as you're exploring our outbuildings, there are stories to tell there. Uh, stories of the enslaved population, stories of uh, the, the Washington family, how the spaces were used, how they were constructed. And so the augmented reality tour allows us to be able to display that. So I mentioned this is the Epson Movero device. Um, and it is this headset with this small computer. Um, all of the content on this is loaded on that computer. So we don't have a need to have an internet connection. We don't have to rely about Wi-Fi, right? You know, this thing just, if you got the tour on there, it's good to go. Um, we worked in collaboration with a company called Artglass. Um, Artglass has done augmented reality tours all throughout Europe. You can see it in, uh, in Pisa, um, in Italy, you can see it in various different museums. What makes, the reason why we partnered with Artglass is I could get this, these glasses and I could develop my own app upon that, you know, and I could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars building out our tour. Art Glass has already figured out all of that. So when we wanted to develop our tour, all we had to worry about were what were the visuals, what was the audio that we wanted to have, and then they have a website that we can go on and we can actually create and design this tour uh, and then it all gets downloaded to the glasses. So they've figured out the largest technology hurdle with us, um, you know, the, 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 and, and this became a very affordable tour uh, for, for Mount Vernon uh, to, to build. Um, we are one of the early sites that Art Glass used to bring to uh, the United States, this technology to the United States. Um, Virginia Highlands, James Monroe's house was the first site. Um, and this is an example of what you can see if you go on the tour there. So they used um, kind of illustrations uh, of characters and then overlaid voices to, along that to tell a story of how the property was used. Um, that this was done in conjunction with graphic design students from the University of Virginia and you know the art class uh, folks provided the technology on top of this and it was extremely affordable for them to create and you know it provided a great class project for the those graphic design students to be able to explore these this new technology one of the other advantages of the art class is you know what i'm passing around is a 700 hundred dollar retail device um, but we didn't pay that, right? So it is a revenue sharing model uh, where they will provide the hardware for you um, in conjunction for a, a, a split on the on the ticket sales. So we ch currently we charge uh, twelve fifty um, to be able to do this tour at Mount Vernon, um, and that is on top of our visitation. So it is a it is a premium offering. Um, so. To kind of explain, you know, how do we even build this, right? Um, you, I, I wanted to kind of give a quick synopsis of, of how the Art Glass team and, and, and has really helped us to understand how to build something in AR. So the best way to think about it is imagine yourself in a bubble, in this spherical bubble, right? And over here I can place an image and over here I can place an image and down here I can place a video, right? Um, and it all depends on the X, the Y, and then the Z axis, so the distance. So I can, um, I can make something appear 
further away in the field of view by, um, by placing it further away. A good example of this is if you've ever been out on our, um, our lawn, uh, you know, you can see the Potomac River. We actually have in our tour several ships that go along that river, and it's all just by creating that content in a further distance. The other thing to note about this technology, it is not the all-encompassing stuff that you saw uh, in our video. This is, every AR video tends to be a little bit of uh, fakey, fakey magic, you know, whatever. So um, your visibility is within this square that I highlight here. So that is something to always take into consideration is, um, now this may ch change over time as technology gets better, it's more immersive, um, but still it's, it's kind of further out. So that meant that any, we don't do a lot of interpretation close up. We do things mainly as you're looking further away. Um, but there's all sorts of different types of displays that you can do uh, with augmented reality. So the couple, if you come out to our tour, we actually have every one of these. So uh, it is some, and I invite all of you to come out. Uh, I'll leave my business cards up here. You can all take a tour for free. Just uh, come on, email me and let me know when you want to come. Um, but it'll do 360 degree video, video where you can look around and it knows you know, where you are in the spaces. You can take a photo, a 360 degree photo, so the same panning that you might do with your iPhone, cell phone to create that 360, you can actually put that within the glasses and then people can look around and see where it is. So imagine that on a historic photo, uh, taking someone back through time, it's an amazing capability. The other thing you can do is you can put photos and videos in fixed positions. So sometimes, you know, we will want to just show you, um, you know, an image. Uh, it might be a painting, it might be a map, it might be a drawing, right? Um, but this allow, we can place this within a, a space. We can do the same thing with videos. So often, sometimes the AR experience is a little too much, especially if I'm not in the correct space. So I can use video as a tool uh, to be able to transport someone to a different place at Mount Vernon, um, but do it within the, in the, the, the glasses. Um, the other thing that you can do with this is transparency. So uh, what they call the alpha channel, which is a, a transparent color, in this case for the augmented reality, it's black. Black is the see-through see color. Um, this allows us to be able to recreate those character videos, right? So shooting on green screen, um, we can isolate, or, or even just a black background, we can isolate those, those individuals. And I can put George Washington here, I can put Tobias Lear here, and I can have them have an interaction with each other. The other advantage is I can actually film it completely separately. So that, that character can be filmed one way and this one can, and they can have a conversation with each other. And what's amazing is when you actually get into the space, you know, you can look this way and there's George Washington, you can look this way and there's Tobias Lear and you're, it's like you're in the middle of the conversation, right? So um, it's a really amazing uh, capability. Uh, the transparent photos is another capability that we have. Um, and this is actually kind of interesting, is like if you go into our gardens uh, on our tour, we can actually overlay data cards about what you're seeing inside the gardens, right? Um, so it, it's like being able to throw up a new interpretive sign uh, virtually within the space. Uh, you can even align this to particular artwork. So the glasses uh, can recognize, they have, glasses have several different types of sensors. Uh, the first is they, they know GPS where they are. They know compass wise which orientation they are in. Um, but they are also have a little tiny camera in the front and it's looking at photos. And if it matches a photo, so a painting, a building, anything that has a, 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 a distinctive quality to it, um, it can know that it's in front of that thing and display a piece of content based off of that. Um, it also can it uses uh, a point cloud, uh, so it shoots out a laser and, be, and it is able to figure out, you know, depth-wise, where am I within a space? So it can know when a co where a corner of the room is, where where a table is within your space. Um, 
But you can take all this and then, you know, you can create composite videos, you can create 3D models uh, within the space, so our mansion is a 3D, 3D model of the evolution there. Um, I would say, though, the, that, you know, this is still very, very early technology. Um, so we've uh, we kind of did a beta program at Mount Vernon over the past year. We learned a lot from it. We made some refinements to our tour. Um, and then we now have kind of what I would say are the learning experiences, right? So um, a couple things that I, I, are, the, are kind of our key challenges. Uh, so it, I think AR is still a little bit of an unfamiliar technology. I mean, you guys probably haven't you know, ever put on a pair of those glasses before. Even I hadn't, right, you know, so, um, so it, it's something brand new. It's not familiar. It takes a little bit extra time with your guest services staff to be able to manage that type of uh, uh, technology uh, and a whole heck of a lot of training. So um, it also works a little bit better indoors than it does outdoors. And it, uh, there are a couple of reasons to that. Not because the glasses can't handle it, because they actually have a flip down, flip up shade, sunscreen shade in it. Um, but it's more that, you know, if you're outside, it's 100, 100 degree weather. I don't, we've never had 100 degree weather around here. What are you talking about? And, and uh, you know, it's hot for 45 minutes, right? And it, it's, it can get kind of uncomfortable. Um, the other thing too is it, it, a weather is a consideration, right? It's waterproof or water resistant, but not waterproof, right? You can't douse it in a, in a tremendous rainstorm. Um, so if I were to do this again, this project again, and we're thinking about doing this, I would actually put it in our museum space instead. Um, I think the wearable tech is still in the early ages, uh, early stages of, of its development. Um, your cell phone actually has, I think, better technology than, than what is in the, the glasses, and that's just because the technology needs to be able to get smaller. There are bigger glasses that you can get, like the Microsoft HoloLens um, is a much larger unit, and it is, the sensors are on it on are way better, and the technology works really well. But no one wants to carry around, you know, something that weighs five pounds on a 45-minute tour. Um, the other thing is that the air tracking isn't quite to the consu consumer's expectations. If you've played like. Uh, Pokemon Go or any of these, you know, senior kids play Pokemon Go, um, you know, they can map that character right to the ground. And that's because the cell phone has better sensors. And, and here we, we still get a little bit of up and down uh, in, in what the, the, the glasses can do. So I mentioned that the, the cell phone, though, does have a lot of technology. And the great thing about the cell phone is that your guests typically bring these on site, right? Um, so it's got, this is the inside of an iPhone, but you know, it's got a gyroscope, it's got a, a laser scan sensor, it's got a better camera, it's, it, can do, it can see a lot more stuff, and it's got a great software platform that handles it. Um, and there are a lot of great AR apps out there. In fact, it's becoming more and more of a thing uh, to be able to do. Uh, you know, I can go virtually put a place of a new piece of furniture in my house. You know, I can do, uh, you know, uh, on Yelp, look around in AR and see what businesses are nearby me and, and the ratings. I can play games where it recognizes that there's a table here, right? And and I can walk around that table and, and be in kind of this virtual world and virtual environment. Or, or I can put characters within the spaces. Um, and these are all great but they still require an app, right? And so this is one of the major challenges and hurdles still uh, in this space. Um, you know, most people only use nine apps total, right? It's you know, your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever, right? You know, um, uh, but they're, and they're very reluctant to download another app. In fact, when we launched an app at Mount Vernon, we only saw about a maximum 5% of people actually use it. So um, this is a, a big barrier to entry. Um, but the one thing I will leave you with is, and, and, well, and so th then it creates this challenge of, um, you know, do you do a bring your own device where they have to download the app? Do you or do a rental? Well, the rental might, you have to figure out where, how you're going to get that, the expense of that hardware um, and be able to, to, you know, recover it and, and all that. Uh, and then you can use the wearable. Now, fortunately, 
you know, we haven't lost a single set of those glasses because no one knows what to do with it outside of Mount Vernon, right? You know, <laughs> but, um, but you know, if that ever became you know a popular unit, that you know we're letting go a seven hundred dollar unit, you know, every time we want to do a tour. So it is something to consider uh, on that. Um, uh, but what I'm most excited about, actually, is what's happening in we the web world. Um, so uh, on, on each of your tables, there's, there's a little blue card, uh, business card, uh, that has um, an example of this technology. So uh, there's a, a platform called ARJS. Um, it's a JavaScript library. And what it allows you to do is build a web page um, and then this, the, 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 cust the guest can pull up the web page on your website. Uh, it will ask them for the permission to use the camera while browsing this web page. Uh, and then you have this little marker here. It's a, in this case, we're using the default marker, which is Hero. Um, but you can make this be your own organization logo. You can be anything that you want to, uh, to show. And when you hold up your phone on the website and align it to the marker, it will show some type of 3D object in space. And so this is actually really, really cool technology if you think about it, because all every guest that comes to you has a cell phone. They, they don't want to download an app, but they don't mind pulling up a web page, right? And so this is really kind of, I think, the, the newest and latest uh, technology that will bring AR more into the mainstream. And, and um, the, what we have created for you in this demo is uh, it's actually the second phase of Mount Vernon. Uh, so it's the house before uh, George added the additional uh, wings of the new room and the library onto it. And so you can explore this model on your own time and, and see it in, in space. Um, but the other thing too, uh, and I'll leave my business cards up here, uh, I, I have all this code uh, available and I would give it away for free if anybody wants to you know, in incorporate this in their own site. All you need is a 3D model uh, to add to it and, and, and to get it working. So it's an amazing capability. I think, you know, AR has a ton of potential, um, uh, but I think it's, uh, you know, we're still right at the cusp of it being uh, uh, something that is, is going to be highly adopted uh, around the world. So I'm going to turn it over to Dorothy, who's going to tell more. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dorothy Stoltz, and I'm uh, Director for Community Engagement with Carroll County Public Library. And uh, are you looking for more grist for your mill? Uh, Ten years ago, uh, if you entered a Carroll County Public Library branch and you were looking for information on a grist mill, we would help you find research in books and uh, online resources. We'd refer you to Union Mills Homestead, which is in our county, has an operating grist mill. Um, oh, let me bring up my uh, thing here. Um, and we would do that today as well. Um, but in addition, uh, we now have technology that we've learned about uh, that, w that actually helps to create um, history in a way that it really brings it to life and people get a first-hand experience and then we would refer you up to uh, uh, Union Mills. So um, libraries have been doing a lot with emerging technology in uh, recent years. Two simple examples, uh, a light painting activity using digital uh, photography and LED lights, uh, giving people an opportunity to try out mini drones. And uh, as Matt had said, virtual reality is that fully immersive experience uh, using a headset um, and you can um, uh, actually, uh, it, it, the brain actually believes that you're immersed in this world. So uh, it's a phenomenal experience if you haven't tried it. And it could be something as simple as a $20 headset 
like this, and there's a, the company that used to make the uh, Viewmasters creates uh, one of these products. This one is by Google, and you put your phone in it, you download their app, put your phone in it, and you get this wonderful virtual reality experience. Uh, so the first time I used this, I um, downloaded the app on uh, uh, field expeditions, and lo and behold, I was standing in that 360 um, environment of a Mayan ruin that I happened to uh, visit like 10 years ago, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm you know reliving this. So it really is uh, pretty spectacular for low cost. Now, if you do high-end, it's a much more immersive experience. Um, but augmented reality is not using um, uh, that immersive kind of experience, but it is that digital overlay, as Matt was saying. So uh, here is um, a car engine using an iPad, and then you can bring up a, a 3D or a 2D uh, I image that can tell you how to fix that part of the engine. So again, you can access that through mobile devices uh, or the headsets. So the Maryland State Library got very interested in figuring out how, what can libraries do to, so that library staff get very familiar with these new technologies and we're offering this to customers. So uh, the Institute for Museum and Libraries offered some grants and we got some grants where Carroll County Public Library and Baltimore County Public Library took the lead and created the first, the first thing we did was a virtual reality road show. So on the left is uh, one of these demonstration type programs where we had virtual reality available, say three days from the time the library opened to the time the library closed and people could just try it out. On the right is the Maker Fair at Silver Spring. Now, the response to this in our two counties, and we went to some other places, um, some state conferences and so on, was overwhelming. So the state library tried to get more of this high-end uh, virtual reality equipment. So you can see it's a heavy headset. Um, but I'll say that about five years ago, uh, I was at a state meeting and we were trying a variety of virtual reality um, games. All of them made me nauseous, even if I was sitting down. You know, it was just like, ah, oh, the, they need to perfect this. Well, um, that the uh, the high end has become affordable. So, using a console, using the headset, uh, and it's a it's a gaming console. So, so the PC is more expensive, but all of that costs probably like fifteen hundred dollars. Um, so, it made it very affordable for us. And so we did more and more outreach, and this is Senator Ben Cardin at uh, the MACO conference, the Maryland Association for Counties conference. So we wanted to get stakeholders involved so they're aware of um, uh, these new and emerging technologies to support any organization or business or whatever trying to offer uh, this kind of technology. And um, so the future really is here with uh, virtual reality. Uh, the top photo here is uh, students being able to experience uh, in a simulated, but it feels very real, walk on the moon. At the Maryland Library Association conference uh, in May, uh, NASA Goddard had an, a virtual reality exhibit there, and they're creating uh, prototypes for different kinds of experiences in space, and they're reaching out to Maryland libraries to um, uh, to be samples, like to learn how, how it can be used, and then they're going to launch it uh, nationally. So I had the experience of being teleported uh, to a satellite circling the Earth, and um, the real-time imaging wasn't working, the video wasn't working, so I got to see a video that was recorded two hours before, but the goal is to be able to, in real time, see what the Earth looks like from the view of that satellite. And it was one of the most exciting 
you know, uh, astronomy experiences I've ever had. The earth was so huge and so beautiful. Um, there is do-it-yourself. Uh, Lowe's has a variety of uh, options and other retailers. Job training, I read about Walmart actually doing part of their uh, onboarding for employees is through virtual reality. Uh, the healthcare system has a lot with pain and anxiety management. Surgeons are planning surgeries using virtual reality. Um, there at the uh, American Library Association conference in June, the, there was a company called Feel the Learn, and they had created a kidney care dialysis clinic experience so that if anyone is interested in becoming a dialysis technician, they could go through this virtual experience and you got to see what the clinic was like, how to interact with staff and, and patients uh, using the hand um, held controllers, you worked with equipment and the instruments so you could determine, well, this might be something I'd like to get training in and get certified in. So the future is here with augmented reality. Uh, on the left is an inventory app that is being used in warehouses and on the right is a gentleman working for Boeing and so he's actually assembling an engine wearing the AR uh, uh, glasses and so when he's looking at a certain section, a 3D diagram comes up that instructs him so he can continue working with both hands so it saves time for the uh, employees. So uh, the guy wearing this uh, Data is the New Bacon uh, t-shirt is uh, the director for operations and innovation at Carroll County Library, Bob Kuntz. He sits on our uh, Carroll Tech Council, working with a lot of different tech businesses. Uh, so a few years ago, we started what we called a tech stroll, and it's in the library park along Main Street in Westminster. And you know, both the library and the tech businesses are offering opportunities to try out uh, different kinds of uh, technology. And uh, one of the things I'd like to mention is that um, whether it's museums, libraries, universities, community colleges, etc., we are the entities to bring this new technology to people. So, I mean, it's so exciting to, to go to Mount Vernon and be able to experience this. Uh, the healthcare system is doing more and more to try to keep people aging in place, and they're using little robots and different things. So, um, uh, it's going to become more in the consumer area for us, as well as health care, education, etc. One of the things that um, my library has been working on is a project called Exploration Commons at 50 East. And this building was originally designed to have two floors. The lower floor is um, nearly underground, but when it was built in the early 80s, they didn't have money to create a, a full second floor, but they made it so that it was dry, it had plumbing, electricity, ready to go when a project came up. And even though like the county commissioners wanted to put in offices there, nothing ever paled out. So now with the makerspace movement, we have found the perfect project for this. So we've gotten grant funding, we're doing fundraising, we expect to open in September of 2020. And it will have a large high-tech makerspace area, all kinds of computer uh, equipment and software, 3D printing, AR, VR, studio, um, uh, it'll have the video, audio, photography studio, there will be a, a professional teaching kitchen, a auditorium with 150 seating, classroom space. Uh, it'll have workshops, certifications on these, this equipment, laser engravers, etc. But we will be like an on-ramp to, if somebody comes, uh, could be students using it on the weekends and evenings, but also um, somebody who gets really good at, say, 3D printing or you are interested in drones, we'll then refer them to the community college to take like a 15-week course. But this will be a 14,000 square foot space. So it'll be the largest library maker space in Maryland. So uh, we're very, very excited about it. 
Um, one of the things we've been able to do in the last couple of years with VR is to work with a um, tech developer and um, uh, he sat in the back of the room where we had three hour library programs and anybody could come in, try out uh, what he called mage works and um, he would learn from them how to um, uh, improve his product. So one of the key pieces here was uh, including a 3D print option. Uh, so when you're in this space, um, you're uh, enjoying the simulation game, but then uh, you're able to design a staff and that staff, like a magical wizard staff, then you can 3D print it in the real world. So library staff had gotten used to augmented reality through some of these uh, different experiences, holotats, which are temporary tattoos. So it's like having a, jo uh, a frog jump or a bird um, uh, fly, et cetera. And you put the temporary tattoo on, use the free app, and then you're able to, to engage with it. And there are these other companies, uh, Quiver and Daiquiri as well, uh, with different kinds of experiences, including uh, learning about the anatomy. So we wanted to do something more substantive. And the library put together a team. We collaborated with Union Mills Homestead and with a company called Balti Virtual. And Balti Virtual is in Baltimore, and I don't know if you know this, but Baltimore is the place on the East Coast if anybody wants to work in the gaming or high-tech industry. So if you're interested, you know, if somebody wants to work in that industry, they either go to the West Coast or they come to Baltimore. And there's about a dozen of these wonderful companies there. Um, so we connected with Balti Virtual. They're an international company. They work with um, PayPal, uh, Under Armour, and a lot of other big companies, but they also do, they're the ones who do these temporary tattoos. And Carroll County Library is the first public library to work with them on this uh, early industry uh, project. So this is the very beautiful and graceful property of Union Mills Homestead and with the grist mill there. And the project that we have for the Carroll Library is very small in scale compared to what uh, Mount Vernon uh, ha is doing. Um, and what we uh, really focused on was um, what can we do to create something that would um, make this early industry come alive? Um, and we were so fortunate to um, and grateful to Mount Vernon to be able to use their graphics of uh, a working mill, both uh, the Union Mills uh, grist mill and Mount Vernon's grist mill uh, is the Oliver Evans design, the, the technology of the time. So that really helped the Baltimore, uh, the Balti virtual staff figure out what they could do to create something exciting uh, in augmented reality. So the middle photo here is the exterior of the augmented reality experience. The water wheel is turning. Uh, for the interior, you can follow the grain, go through the process uh, to become flour. And this is a tannery, and it had been sort of like multi-buildings uh, connected together. It was all torn down, but uh, uh, whenever the museum wanted to um, uh, try to recreate the tannery, they built a replica of two of the buildings. So that became the image for um, the tannery. And let me show you the video here. So it's really, this is the most exciting project in my uh, fairly long library career. Um, oops. Let's see here. There we go. So we created a traveling exhibit. 
um, the library team put this together. We have uh, three panels. Two of them are the augmented reality markers uh, with two um, exhibit cases with artifacts. You can see the iPads that you hold up to the marker so you can experience uh, the animation. And there's narration with it too. It's 30 seconds for each marker. So you're learning about the grist mill and the, the tannery. And we had a third iPad with a survey during the time of the grant. This is all grant funded uh, to get some feedback. And so we went around to a lot of different libraries and schools and so on. Um, and uh, one of the highlights was at the uh, Maryland Senate building in Annapolis uh, last May. And we go to senior facilities. This is. Um, Sam Riley, who's the president of Union Mills, because uh, some of our stops we were able to give presentations as well. And uh, this was uh, recorded and posted to Facebook by the uh, senior facility, Lorian in Tawnytown. And they said within uh, two days they had 300 views, which was the, uh, the most views they had for anything they've posted on Facebook. Uh, and this is uh, Sam presenting at the, um, uh, the chapel auditorium at Carroll Lutheran Village. And we had the exhibit over in the Wellness Center. And another big highlight was uh, at uh, Antietam National Park where we had the exhibit. And this is Jen Bishop, who's our emerging uh, technology supervisor. And she's going to be the manager of that new space uh, exploration commons. Um, I also just want to mention another exciting technology that we've been working with in the last three months is a social uh, programmable humanoid robot and it's called Pepper. And you might see Pepper in a restaurant in a big city or a hotel or what have you. Uh, the Smithsonian is supposed to have one at one of their museums as a greeter. So we have Pepper the robot and we, when we went out to start demonstrating the first uh, offer of a demonstration at one of our library branches, we had 82 people show up. So people are very eager to learn about this information. We're also offering workshops to learn how to program the robot. Now, it's very simple technology. <laughs> technology. Um, one of the things uh, Pepper can do is sing a song in story time, try to lead a song, but the children's librarians are not threatened at all because it's you know nowhere near as good as the live person. Um, <laughs> maybe in, I don't know, maybe down the road it'll be different, but. Uh, uh, but there's a lot of uh, excitement in the community. So anything that we can do, you know, in our institutions to help promote this technology, I, I think is, is well worth it. And uh, so I'll just uh, close by saying, um, oh, I did want to say that uh, we went around to 22 locations with that traveling exhibit across in different parts, not just Carroll County, but different parts of the state. Uh, we were here at the uh, Seber Arts uh, Library Center as well. Um, so it was over 16 months, and the analytics for the number of views from the exhibit, from some flyers that we had, and from our um, uh, website as well was over 7,400. So uh, we were really delighted with the response. So, um, you know, just to say that. Uh, uh, just you know, emphasizing that history uh, is not limited to books or even the imagination, uh, but now with these emerging technologies, we can really offer an experience uh, that can put you to participate in the event itself. And I think the technology is getting better and better. So uh, thank you. And I have uh, flyers and also coasters up here with this a AR experience, so you're welcome to take it.